Aloha. That's a response. That's a response term. Aloha. Much better, much better. Thank you all for coming. I hope more people will drift in. Uh, this is dear to my heart. I'm a townie and I went to Antioch College and I want us to be together in this, this situation of producing a new college unlike any college that has ever been made in this country or anywhere. And that's what we've got the opportunity to do. And we have a panel together that will discuss things that are happening. But this is also going to be an interactive discussion about people who have questions, about ideas, that ideas, we want them. We, this is a, a synergy. This is not a town gown uh, division. It's a town gown working together. And so I'm very excited to have this panel. Did, did I did, did, did hear it? Um, at any rate, uh, okay, okay, I do, I do. At any rate, uh, Luke is our, our uh, uh, moderator, and I'm through. All right, David. Yeah. Thank you, David. Hi, I'm Luke Dennis. I work for WYSO. I'm also a townie. Um, the, goal, the goal today, I think, is to describe to you the state of the existing relationships between town and gown, between college and the village, and then to work with you, get your feedback to articulate a platform for how to further the work and keep it going and get ideas for ways that this can be a two-way street, right? I'll give the very briefest of introductions of our panelists, and then I'm going to let Tom Manley kind of set the frame for the discussion. I think everyone knows uh, President Tom Manley, so I won't introduce him. Uh, Brian... Right? I mean, you've, been, you've probably been talking to him in the last couple of days. Uh, Brian Hausch is the president of the Yellow Springs Village Council and a very active and engaged member of the nonprofit community in Yellow Springs. He's ubiquitous. Um, Malta von Matheson, I think many of you know Malta. He spent many years on the boards of trustees of both the university and the college, uh, was the president of uh, Yellow Springs Instrument here in Yellow Springs. His, the bios are on the back of this paper if you want to read more. Uh, Kevin Magruder is another ubiquitous figure in the village of Yellow Springs. He's a faculty member here at the college. Uh, I have sung with him in the World House Choir. He's a member of the 365 Project and many other uh, dynamic nonprofit activities here in Yellow Springs. Gina Marie Cox is the uh, executive director of the Yellow Springs Community Foundation and a longtime village resident. Marcel Van Arsdale just graduated from Antioch College. Congratulations. <laughs> He led a very successful uh, college village initiative that he'll tell us about called Music on Maine. And Susan Jennings is the executive director of the Arthur Morgan Institute for Community Solutions and is really making a lot of things happen there and also a lot of, uh, is charting a path for f ongoing collaboration between the college and the village. So we'll hear from everyone. Uh, they'll give you a little update of a snapshot of the work they're doing with the college, but I'd like to start with Tom to kind of set the frame for the discussion. So, President Tom Manley, you wanna, why don't you use mine, yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone, again. Um, so, I'm really excited about this particular panel because I think it gets, uh, allows us to get um, much more down to the ground in terms of what a new kind of college actually looks like and how it functions in the real world. And what you have before you is both examples of how that can happen in many modalities, but also uh, on the back of your sheet, um, so there's the, the short bios of folks, and then on the back of your sheet, there's a set of uh, areas of practice. And the areas of practice really suggest uh, not future portals, but existing portals that Antioch is developing that um, that resonate with the core commitments of the college around things like sustainability and diversity and uh, deliberative democracy and human creativity and well-being, all of these things that actually do have anchors in our curriculum, uh, but most curricula uh, are not expressed in, in, this, in this way. But these are also values, uh, core commitments, that we think um, are present generously 
in the village of, of Yellow Springs. That is that there are many of you who have court commitments, not perhaps in all of these areas, but in some of these areas. And so these suggest ways that you can uh, interact and that the um, wider village can interact in bringing down the traditional boundaries between that are defined as a gown and town. Most places where you have this discussion, we're really talking about how is how can you uh, keep the noise down? Um, you know, when when the football uh, the homecoming game is in town, how do we keep you know the downtown area from getting trashed? Um, the kinds of concerns that, that we have, it's not just because we don't have a football team and haven't had one since 1929. Um, the kinds of concerns that, that, that we can have and, exp and explore together really uh, um, relate to not how do we get along as a college and a, and a community, but how can we redefine the whole notion of what it means to be a community and to use the resources of a college to do that, so we can redefine literally the idea of community college. So I'm going to stop talking, but that's the, the, the frame that the college is looking at. The kinds of collaboration that we, we're talking about are not just partnerships to get, um, you know, to um, uh, a win-win. We're looking for uh, wins that uh, a tri triple wins for the college, for the partner organization, and then also for the wider community. So thank you for coming, and I'll turn it over to Brian. All right, thanks. Should I grab this? Yes. Take this. Okay. Uh, good evening. And uh, first of all, I do want to thank David Scott for pulling this panel together. Um, I really feel strongly that the time is now for thinking about this in a in, in an. I guess different earnest way, and I appreciate what Tom has mentioned about uh, you know the fact that there's such a solid fit between the college and the village, and uh, I wanted to highlight a few things to give some context for that. As I look down this line, actually, I think about some of the things we've just been doing recently that involve all the partners at this table. We have a green space fund at the village that helped made make Agraria uh, happen, and Susan will tell you a lot more about that. Um, Marcel and I have had a couple great conversations, and that was the first time it really impacted me, the students having an active interest now in uh, reviving you know, what's been such an important part of the relationship in, in our community and with the college. And uh, Music on Main was a brilliant idea, is a brilliant idea. Uh, Gina Marie has been involved in a lot of community development uh, initiatives. I'm sure you've all seen the Art Cans down, downtown, which uh, was a big support. We're going to have a trail out to John Bryant uh, State Park one day. So uh, that's something the Community Foundation has been supporting. And Kevin and Malta have been really actively involved in our housing initiatives and um, in some of the things that we've been working on lately, such as uh, what we call a com community improvement corporation. So I do want to highlight a few things, if you don't know, that have been amazing that have been happening in the village. Environmental sustainability-wise, we now have a 93% renewable energy, energy portfolio, um, which is pretty amazing, huh? We followed Antioch College's lead, and we now have our own one megawatt solar array that is right out on the, what's called the glass farm. And uh, we've been seeing a lot of great things happen with economic development. I think you know we have our own medical marijuana cultivation plant that's going to bring, uh, yes, it's going to bring um, revenue sharing to the village, estimated 400000 a year when they're up and running, which is going to be huge for community development. Um, we have amazing local businesses that are expanding, like the Yellow Springs Brewery, and things just keep getting more exciting there. The village has been working a lot on inclusiveness and diversity, delivering on our village value to be a welcoming community to all. And um, one of the things that has been really nice is our partnership with the Coretta Scott King Center along those lines. And then we've also been seeing a lot of other partnerships around this community development piece. So, if I specifically talk about Antioch College, Tom and I have had a lot of conversations over the last six months in particular, and we've been bringing in a lot of the Antioch College leadership team, and there are four main things that we've been looking at. One is shared services. This is still something we're thinking about, but how can we gain efficiencies for all the entities in the village? And uh, we're looking at best practices and opportunities around that shared space. 
We already have an amazing wellness center that has been a huge community asset. We're looking at an incubator. We had Michael Schumann here, the guru on local investing, and he believes that one of our best opportunities is for Antioch College to host and uh, you know support that incubator. Um, that could also have a maker space attached to it. We've got a performing arts center that we've been looking at as a community. I mentioned the Designated Community Improvement Corporation, which is a very intentional effort for all the main entities, the Village Antioch College, the K-12 schools, the township to get involved together. And then we have a variety of other intentional collaborations. Um, we annexed the Glen so that we could help support that um, you know, and work with Antioch College. I mentioned the Coretta Scott King Center, the variety of other things. So, I want to really emphasize again, the time is now. You have a council that is really geared up. I see many of my fellow council members here today. We are, we've formed a leadership team that is collaborative. We're looking at all ideas we can to work together. And so it's really exciting to see these opportunities all um, drawing together. And I think you're going to see some amazing things. So please give us your ideas. We won't get them all in tonight, but um, we're easy to contact. And we are actioning those things in a very intentional manner. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. So um, I showed up here in the fall of 1961, and I've been living in this town on and off since then. And I can remember um, in years past, there was a, a very robust ro a town gown relationship, um, which I think uh, got lost um, probably during the times that um, I moved away and didn't uh, live here in Yellow Springs. Um, <laughs> so um, a couple of things I want to share with you. Um, when we moved back uh, to Yellow Springs in 1913, um, the Wellness Center was coming online. 2013, yeah, right. Where the wellness center was coming, right, second time. The wellness center was coming online, so we had uh, came up with this idea of reaching out to the Yellow Springs community to help fund the startup of the, of the wellness center. And um, we raised a million dollars from the town to, uh, to, uh, to support bringing the wellness center online. And um, that was really a big event because I think a lot of folks thought we could never do that. But um, that was a very important uh, step in bringing the town and, and the college back together. Um, and today we have uh, about uh, 2,000 plus members uh, of the Wellness Center. And many of those folks um, are not part of the college, uh, either staff, students, uh, faculty, etc. It also occurred to me that um, we had lost uh, a forum for getting together uh, different folks from different organizations uh, here in town. So I reached out to some uh, of our, my colleagues and I suggested that we start something called a roundtable. And um, Tom is a member of the roundtable, Brian is a member of the roundtable, Gina Marie, um, Susan, Susan is a member of the roundtable. And this is an informal group that gets, we have the, the, the superintendent of the schools is a member of the roundtable. Emily Seibel, who is the head of Home Inc. We get together every four to six weeks and we, it's informal. And we talk about what we're doing, what the issues are, the concerns that we have. And I thought it was really interesting because uh, it has opened up a dialogue. Um, one of the things that we've talked a lot about was the school levy, which uh, was turned down, um, and some of the reasons why that was true. We've also talked about affordable housing. It was really interesting because recently the superintendent of schools has become very passionate about this whole idea of affordable housing, which is an important initiative for the future of the village. Um, so um, that's something I think that has been really very productive and it's been helpful for Tom to 
to share with the rest of us what's happening at, at the college and um, his uh, vision for the future and, and some of the concerns and some of the issues. There are always a lot of rumors floating around, so this really gives Tom an opportunity to forum to really address uh, uh, some of those concerns. So I won't talk about um, the Antioch College uh, pocket neighborhood because we've already talked a lot about that, but this is clearly a wonderful example of an initiative that has come together and it's gonna happen because both the college and the community are working very hard to make this real. So, Kevin. I uh, came to Antioch in 2012 and when I knew I was gonna have a campus visit, um, which means you're a finalist, I went online and started doing some research about Yellow Springs. And I had been living in New York for 30 years. And moving to New York, I moved there from Cleveland. Um, that was a real kind of difficult transition. Um, not just because of the difference in places, but I, it took me a while to get grounded there. And when I reflected back on it, um, I got grounded when I got involved with organizations in New York. And so coming to Yellow Springs, from, I lived in Harlem in New York. It's a community of 300,000 people, but we call it the village of Harlem, and people might laugh about it, but there really are some parallels. So coming to Yellow Springs, I knew if I was going to consider uprooting myself, I wanted to be in a community where there were things that resonated with my interests. So I went online, I saw the 365 Project existed, nonprofit organization that focuses on celebrating black culture. There were black churches here. I was very involved with my church in New York. And so when I came on campus, I knew that if things went well, I could probably dive into some things here. And, and that's, that's really what I've done. And um, so if I look at today, uh, I was just telling Gina Marie, we had a, I'm on the uh, Yellow Springs Community Foundation Grants Review Committee. We had a, a brisk uh, meeting this morning at 9 a.m. We were done by about 9.20 um, because we're very efficient. And it was only one, <laughs> it was only one uh, thing to consider. And then at 10, I met with um, tour guides, uh, high school students, who uh, we were doing a practice session for a Blacks in Yellow Springs walking tour, a business walking tour. Um, so we practiced from 10, had lunch, and then reconvened at one and did the tour. And that went till three. And so you know, I'm giving examples of, I'm not gonna go through the different things I've been doing, but I, I came to history through community development. Um, I worked in nonprofit community development for a long time. So what makes communities work are relationships. And I recognize that from my New York experience. So I was very intentional about, I've been intentional about what I've done here. And I've had a lot of opportunities because of those relationships. And I think, I know when I met with Mark Roosevelt uh, in that campus visit, I sensed from him that he, his desire was for the faculty to be grounded in the community, and um, and so and that aligned with mine. And so, um, I bought a house here four years ago. You know, and for me, I didn't want to be in a place where I'm just coming in and going. And so, if I put my faculty hat on, we have some real challenges in terms of faculty retention. And you know, there's a range of reasons for them, but I think one of them is because. If you are living in Columbus and coming in on the days you teach and then going back, your um, there's something in a, a line in the Bible uh, where the where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And so, if you if your life is somewhere else, the job is a small part of it, and it's kind of easy to keep it moving. But the job can be an important part of it. But if you have other things in the community that are very important too, in a way that can kind of balance out. If things are not going well in the job, it's like, well, okay, I have my church. I'll do things. <laughs> and you know, I say that as a joke, but I think that's the way that, you know, I haven't talked intentionally about how we might incorporate that into our orientation for faculty. Um, I came to that understanding kind of by chance, but I think as we recruit faculty 
and let them know what's here, encourage them to live here, even though it's becoming more challenging. That's why I bought in four years ago, because I probably could not buy now. Um, and that's an issue because if you if you if it's hard to live here, we're not going to get. So what faculty that are involved in the community? I think one of the roles we play is we can be a bridge. So Lisa Krieger and I are in the World House Choir. Often, I'm a bridge between things happening on campus and. If it's space, if it's other things, and we can play that role in, in other areas. Because I know Lisa, that's how I got on the Grants Review Committee, because she asked me. And so there's this way that we can encourage faculty to be intentional about establishing those relationships to, to really have the outcome that this, this panel or this um, talk is about um, for all of us to bring our gifts to the community and um, you know, I've had people tease me about, oh, aren't you tired? Oh, you're in the paper. But they're, they're, they're all things that, um, you know, I was a commencement speaker last year, and my talk was about endeavoring to live the life you have imagined. This is the life I imagine. And so, you know, doing things, and you know, even if we think about Antioch, we're a liberal arts or college, that's really what the liberal arts should do is we should be able to move in a lot of different areas. They may be unrelated to some people, but they're related to us. And so I think there are ways that we can do that um, as a college and, and really encourage faculty to, to really get more involved in the community. And Kevin, Kevin, do you have a sense of what percentage of your colleagues on the faculty live in the village? Mm -hmm. I don't Less want to than half. You about half? Yeah. OK, good. Less, maybe. OK, thank you. Gina Marie. So I was living in New York City and decided it was time to start thinking about raising a family. And when I did that, I thought, well, I want to be near home. I was in the industry of apparel and design, and I traveled all the time, and I wanted to have family nearby. And I, one of the reasons I came to Yellow Springs is because of the college. I wanted my um, children to be in a community that had um, a variety of education, not just the public schools, but a variety of education and, and higher education as well. And that there would, was a relationship between the school, the schools and all the education and the arts and all of the areas of the community. So that's how I ended up here. Um, about uh, two years ago, I took a job as the first executive director for the Community Foundation. And huge change for me coming from traveling every week to New York City and um, points all around the world for apparel to um, coming to the Community Foundation. The reason I did was because I realized that my time in Yellow Springs with different organizations that I was involved with, the Little Art Theater or the Chamber um, or the Community Foundation or John Browning Community Pottery or the college itself was much more enjoyable to me on that moment than it was when I was getting on a plane every day. So um, the opportunity to come to the Community Foundation has allowed me to reach into a lot of different organizations here in the community and um, find ways that the Community Foundation can assist. And today, in terms of endowments, we have um, over 50 endowments uh, at the Community Foundation. And about a third of all of our grants come into Antioch College in one way or another. And some of those are directed because of that is the topic of the um, endowment, and some are because of grant requests that come out of our general grant fund. So we have a very um, strong support of the organization. I um, meet with Tom on a regular basis and Suzanne to make sure that we're um, hearing the things that the um, college needs and um, that we're responding in a way and that the board understands, of the board of the Community Foundation understands the needs and um, direction of the college. One of our biggest um, in, um, endowments is the Miller Endowment, and it supports the Miller, um, the Miller Fellows Program. It's been in place for about eight years now. Uh, and the um, last year and seven, 2017 program, that we're just now finishing up, had 18 different nonprofits represented in the uh, Yellow Springs. And uh, we had 28 students participate in the program, which basically puts students in nonprofits. 
It's paid for, their um, hourly rate is paid for by the endowment. And then the, um, it gives the um, students an opportunity to assist and help. And um, I think most of the nonprofits would say it's been very supportive. And from the students' perspective, it gives them an opportunity to be in, um, ingrained and involved um, with, the, um, with the community itself. So in terms of the community foundation, um, the Miller Endowment is our town gown endowment. Um, we have others that speak to it, but that one is 100% focused on opportunities to put students and the um, community together. So. My name is Marcel. I've been here since 2014, coming in as a freshman from Chicago. And since then, um, I've been able to be part of community governance, serving as events coordinator to council president, and um, first as a Miller Fellow with Yellow Springs Community Foundation, and c continuing on so with them as well. And in the process, about six months ago, I co-founded a creative collective called the Antioch Creative Collective. And it spun out of really two needs. One was, how do we open up Antioch College from students in the social perspective and the culture to Yellow Springs, the nearby colleges, friends that didn't attend, or even people that were on campus but weren't necessarily connected. And then the second need was how do we communicate the message of Antioch or even within ourselves and on campus, how do we improve communication other than email, other than you know regular forms, status quo forms of communication, but really playing with media, really playing with all these different skill sets that students with whether they're in literature and performing in the record to people who are creating media and are very much part of social media, how do we use those means of communication more effectively from our point of view? And so coming in six months ago um, with the Creative Collective, we started to produce original content from funny skits um, that kind of made fun of some of old Antioch traditions that I think we could all uh, agree on and, and you know have some perspective on um, to some serious um, conversations about some of the things that either one need to change or things in which we could change and improve upon in our own culture. Like how do we get around passive aggressive culture and talk more directly about the problems that affect our community to how do we take the conversation that we talk about in Antioch and all the things that we talk about and, and come up with in terms of problems and how do we have impact in the community. So um, June 9th, so about a few weeks ago, about three, four weeks ago, our biggest project yet, Music on Main, um, was an effort to tie in our events, our culture with street fairs and Chamber of Commerce's uh, street fair, which happens about twice a year. It brings about 25,000 people for each day. and we had started kind of a tradition of events basically the year prior. So we had came up with what we call the union party. And it was uh, an event to bring the nearby colleges and the town together for a house party, which we came up with a small budget for, kind of created a marketing plan to get out there on social media. And I had about 300 people attend to this little house party down on, on Livermore. And so that came to be Union Fest that happened uh, winter quarter for about 250 people. And we had local musicians play in the Foundry Theater. And that was just really cool to see that, number one, we could use the space, a lot of the empty space that isn't being utilized, and spaces that you know, were so ingrained in our culture, whether in you all's being alum or mine, depending on which building was open. Um, <laughs> to now doing um, a festival, Musical Main, which is held right in front of Main Hall on Main Lawn. And so this event brought out um, a huge headliner, Talib Kweli, and we had about five different acts um, from local and regional areas come and perform. And it was awesome. We did it in about a 10-week period for independent study. Kevin Magruder was my independent advisor for the project. Um, and Really, that whole project was a case study to show that as students, whether it's 10 weeks, whether it's 28 weeks, whether it's three months, you know, we can really affect change if we want to, and there's ways to do it. And so Musical Main was kind of creating that framework to be able to produce events, produce 
you know, startups. Um, C Shop has been um, another project that has started in, in around the same time as ACC. And, um, and throughout it all, I mean, most people at this table from Malta, Tom, I mean, just a lot of mentorship from the community, working with Brian House, working with the village and the chamber um, to create an event that not only impacts us on one revenue generation, which through a biannual event that kind of also adds value to the music culture that Antioch and Yellow Springs has been experiencing, but to also be able to provide you know, a culture booster to the Antioch student body, which I feel like as a student coming here from 2014 to 2018, that's one of the sad things is that, you know, we don't really have a vehicle for institutional knowledge to be passed down. There's a lot of things that I really don't know about Antioch and its past. Um, it's made available in Antiochiana, but there's no formal introduction to those things. There's no formal introduction to the culture of Antioch and what we're about and what we're trying to be about and what we're trying to build here. And so um, Musical Main was just our idea and our way of um, bringing that to the community. So uh, first of all, let me say that I, I and many other people are incredibly enthusiastic about the direction that Antioch is taking with a self-designed major and the areas of practice. It feels like a really good fit for Antioch, and it also feels like a um, kind of a generational shift in what needs to be happening in higher education. So it's been, I know it's been a long road um, getting all this uh, together and the change in the calendar, but again, many of us are very enthusiastic and are really looking forward to supporting the college in, in this transition. So I came to Antioch, or excuse me, I came to Community Solutions and Antioch uh, four years ago. As many of you know, uh, the Arthur Morgan Institute for Community Solutions has a long, um, history with Antioch. We were founded by Arthur Morgan in 1940, and um, many uh, people who have worked for the organization have also taught at Antioch. There's been a lot of um, collabor collaborations with students and staff. We actually moved our office here um, two, three years ago, uh, so we spent two years on campus, and that was really marvelous for me because it really gave me a chance to get to know Tom, get to know many of the faculty and students so that when we ended up moving out to a farm that we bought last year at auction, 128 acres, about a year, a year and a few months ago, we had already um, formed a lot of relationships that have really served us well. Um, I wanted to mention that I... Uh, came to Antioch from the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth, where I was the director of campus and community sustainability. And that was a, also a really good um, sort of uh, seedbed for our partnerships with Antioch. Because in that job, I kind of had the opposite job of what I do now. I was in an academic setting and trying to forge relationships with the community and understanding the complexities of uh, faculty, the faculty who do want to work with a community but don't necessarily have the bandwidth, they don't necessarily have the connections, and the community which is looking to a um, university or college for um, human capital and, and intellectual capital, but don't necessarily, uh, oftentimes universities and colleges are black boxes and it's really hard to know like where, where, to, where to reach out to um, get collaboration started. And then it's also difficult just because of the nature of um, the, the term system or a quarter system that there's uh, some time constraints in being able to, to forge long-term partnerships. So I feel like we have um, addressed a lot of those in our, in our um, conversations with Antioch, and I, I really want to laud the Community Foundation and the Miller Fellow Program. That's been one of our most um, important um, supports, uh, both uh, financial, because we have amazing, amazing staff that we get essentially for free, and then again in this... Um, really interesting uh, intersection with Antioch and the community. And you probably know if you've seen some of the Antioch students, the current Antioch students, that they really are an amazing bunch, very committed. Um, as I've, I've said, they never let you get away with anything, right? So you can't, you really, you know, the, it's really helpful for me. I don't think of myself as a fuddy-duddy, but honestly, <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> The um, sort of new ideas and the commitment to social justice and the real like 
grappling with the complexities of where we are now, you know, both both in the kind of like politics of identity um, and 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 every other kind of politics you can think of, that Antioch students are right there in the middle of it, like dealing with it and sort of really committed to creating a different kind of future. So it's a real honor to work with them. Um, it, I, we, I don't know that we would exist as an organization the way we do without the Miller Fellow Program. And in fact, we have hired um, two students, two Antioch grads um, who work for us full time now, and they came to us first as Miller Fellows. So that's, and we hope to hire more as well. So that that says a lot to me about the program. Um, the partnership that we are working on now with Antioch is specifically related to the farm that we bought. That's uh, directly west of Yellow Springs, about a half mile from the high school on East Dayton Yellow Springs Road. We um, came to buy the farm because of our interest in carbon sequestration and soil and soil regeneration as primarily a climate tool. And I, I don't know how many of you are aware, but um, soil and the regeneration of soil is seen now to be as an important uh, tool for climate uh, mitigation as renewable energies are, or, or you know, the re reduction of fossil fuel emissions. Um, so it's a very exciting um, new study, um, but it is really brand new. So one of the main uh, things that are holding, that is holding research back in carbon sequestration is that farming is really a regional um, activity. So what we do here is different than what happens in California, they're, they're, where there, for example, is a Marin County carbon project. So there really has not um, a uh, farm in our region or our, you know, several state region that's really looking at soil regeneration and carbon sequestration. So this is this is why we bought the farm. Luckily, or you know, serendipitously, it also has an amazingly beautiful barn, a farmhouse, a workshop that we've turned into offices. So um, over the past year or 15 months, we've been exploring um, other farms, other research centers across the country to really try to figure out what the, what we can do with the, the assets. We have like these huge assets, but then we also have limitations because we're not researchers and we're not farmers and we don't have the money to hire like the Land Institute um, who, that many of you know in Kansas has eight full-time researchers and lots and lots of um, PhD students doing doing funded research and that's not right now I mean maybe that will be in, in our future so um, one of the um, one of the things that we've realized as we've looked at this sort of and and I, I actually think that we're running parallel, sort of thought processes to Antioch College on a slightly smaller scale. Um, with, and luck, luckily, we're not as much on the public stage as Antioch is, so we're able to like struggle a little bit without being in the front pages. Um, but we, uh, what we recognize is that what we are good at is deep collaboration. That you know, we're not going to be creating our own curricula necessarily. We're not going to be um, doing our own research, but we know how to collaborate, and we have collaborated, and we had already developed relationships with many, uh, many organizations in the village as well as with um, many uh, faculty, students, and administrators at Antioch. So the um, a couple things that we're working on with Antioch are sharing of faculty and specifically in this case um, Kim Landsbergen who is an environmental studies professor and who has been helping us um, develop research designs for the property. We, we are also collaborating with other colleges and universities but Kim has been really our lead person in thinking about research design. Um, Beth Bridgman, who is a wonderful co-op professor and has a extensive experience in um, extension, in ex, uh, cooperative extension. She, in fact, just did a seed saving workshop um, at our barn this morning. And we are um, putting together a two week block course for next summer on homesteading. We previously uh, collaborated on skill sharing courses, which get like students sign up for, they get filled up like really quickly. So the goal now in the summer block is to have a full suite of um, homesteading programs that would be both out at the farm and at Antioch. And then the, we're also working with um, Kat Christian, who is the um, Antioch farm manager on farm design. We're working with other faculty. Kevin was out at the farm about a month ago with some students talking about um, the history of Ohio farming. And uh, so we're really looking forward to building that out and um, to 
to really exploring uh, how we can support, again, this transition. And some ideas include uh, doing longitudinal, involving students in longitudinal research. And again, this is a really exciting new field um, of soil regeneration. So Antioch students coming in with that kind of a focus on um, environmental sustainability could participate in lo longitudinal research at the, at the farm. And then we also have possibilities of real hands-on, like build, build a tiny house um, class, or again, like seed, seed saving over a two-week period. So there's lots and lots of opportunities to work together, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the future brings. Great. Thank you, panelists. So hopefully that uh, has given you a good snapshot of existing current relationships, collaborations. Uh, we, we, of course, couldn't go into everything. But we, we've talked about the Wellness Center, the round table that Malta mentioned, Agraria, some shared services models that the village is talking about, Music on Main, uh, the Miller Fellow Program, which is one of the most visible ways that the, the Antioch College students are in the community. Uh, how many, could we could I have a show of hands? How many of you actually live here in the village? Okay, maybe not, maybe not quite half. Uh, I, I think there's the beginnings of a fairly healthy conversation happening in the village that as we evolve and chart out a path for our future, maybe it's not such a great idea to, to cling to the past so strongly, right? Or to, to gl overly glorify the past so that maybe we need to you know, make, a, make a new future for ourselves. Um, however, I think in this moment, in this panel, it, uh, there's so much knowledge and experience in the room I wonder if we can look backwards and look forwards at the same time. Are there, would anyone in the audience like to share an example that's slightly different from anything you've heard from the panel about a, a type of collaboration uh, that was happening between the college and the village when you were here as a student? And do we, is someone running around with a mic or shall I, I run? I've got a mic. Oh, great. So David's going to bring a mic to you. So there's one in the back, David. And then the panel, if you could, if you'd like to respond uh, to, the, to the audience members. Um, well, I guess many of you don't know me. My name is Gene Milgram. Uh, first of all, my father was Morris Milgram, and some of you know he did interracial housing all across the United States, which is why your housing efforts need to think about that. Um, when I was at Antioch, we Antioch students in the Maples Fire Department were members of the responded Miami Township. We were members of the Greene County Firemen's Association. Um, I remember a meeting back in the late 60s when the Greene County Firemen's Association meeting, and we called roll, and when we said there were X number of people from Antioch there, the, pre the president said, boys, I don't mean to insult you, but do you guys know what your record said? And he went through it, and we said yes, and he said, um, you know, you you guys. You, they basically said you guys are the, you guys are the only good thing that Antioch has. <laughs> um, and conversely, it's very important to recognize that for 20 years, this community was served by a fire truck that was custom designed by Maples in the in 1969. Uh, Bruce Rickenback was one. Roger Norton, deceased pretty quickly, was was another. Um, that fire truck was funded by Yellow Springs, by the F Maples raising $10,000 from the community of Yellow Springs because Mort Rao, college vice president for finance, after many meetings, had agreed that they would fund the exist continued existence of Maples with $15,000 and Mort sent over used fire truck catalogs for us to buy a used fire truck and Maples said, no, we want to go new. And to do that, we needed $10,000 more, and it was raised from the community around with various fundraising efforts. And by the way, just as to let you know, three nights ago, David uh, from Work Project was at a field, and we found, we, he found who in, the, who in this community still has that old fire truck amongst a forest of weeds on a farm. <laughs> So, do you have a question for a member of the panel, or 
Do you want to you challenge asked for, No, you yeah. asked for examples. Oh, sure. I have a question. I don't understand how you can possibly talk about this topic without someone referencing Arthur Morgan's book from 1935 era of the small community. I think Susan Jennings has read that book. Uh, can I put you on the spot, Susan? Is that guiding any of your current work? Do you want to pass the mic down, uh, Kevin? Yeah, I'm actually really glad that you asked that question. Um, I think as many, many people here um, uh, honor Arthur Morgan, one of, one of the things that's very interesting to me is how prescient he was about globalization and about urbanization. And I feel like this kind of, um, in some ways, chaotic response now to globalization and the retreat to, uh, retreat to um, isolationism is really, Arthur Morgan was writing about that before uh, globalization was a term or urbanization was a term. And what he suggested, and which I think is actually really happening in Yellow Springs, is that communities really are the seedbed of democracy. They're the seedbed of community. They're how culture gets passed around, passed down, um, and developed. And that if we make small communities interesting, then young people don't necessarily need to leave or they have a reason to come back, which many young people do come back to Yellow Springs. Um, so let's see. I'm not sure. I don't need to like start a lecture. But yes, I have read the book. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Ke Kevin, you want to and, uh, yeah, add on to that? Yeah, I uh, used the book for an independent study. When I uh, So my background is in housing and community development. And when I got involved with the Annie College Village project, I knew of two students who I knew were interested in that area. So one had approached me about doing an independent study. And so we used that book for that independent study as well as the meetings, the early meetings of Antioch College Village about a year ago that they participated in. And I also think that um, that this is the time for that book. Um, and particularly, this is the place to um, one, not just because of Arthur Morgan, but when you look at what Yellow Springs has been able to do, that this is not a suburb. It really is a, a village that is self-contained, and there's not a lot of those that are doing that successfully. And we do have our challenges, but I think that there's the potential for us to to build on that study, one, as we do it again here. Um, there was a, a small communities conference a couple weeks ago in Indiana that I wasn't able to go to, but I want to get connected with those people because I think s some of the things that they're doing, we probably have already been doing here, and I think we can really build on that both sure. at the college and in the community. L I, so, let's get so a little bit specific. I understand that the... Luke, could I, could I oh, just of course. say, so when I got here, about five minutes later, the people from um, um, the Arthur Morgan Institute, uh, Don and Susan, came over with a stack of books that kind of came up to my waist. <laughs> and among the books was uh, that, and then the, uh, the Arthur Morgan book on small community democracy. And if you look at this, the whole concept that we're talking about today around environmental sustainability, democracy, social justice, and even the incubator that um, that Kevin was referring, um, I'm sorry, Brian um, was referring to, uh, these are all uh, ideas that uh, Arthur Morgan embraced and understood the relationship between um, citizens, um, culture, uh, governance, and economy. And these are all things that a, that a small, even a small college, can become a generator for. So I understand how the community governance model within the college can be a laboratory for participatory democracy, right? It, is there a history of Antioch College students working with village council on village governance? Is that something that's in your planning or a, maybe is there a success story from the past that we could pull out of the room, Don? Uh, there's a mic right behind Don, you. Don, there's a microphone right behind you. And I'm going to give a quick plug before I hand Don the microphone. Agrary is having an open house on Sunday afternoon, 2 to 4. So I, I, all of you that haven't seen it, you've got to go see it. Well, before the Miller Fellows... Don, will you will tell them who you are? Uh, I'm Don Hollister. I'm a volunteer senior fellow at the Arthur Morgan Institute. Uh, before the Miller Fellow 
pattern, uh, just more out of co-op enthusiasm. A guy named Bruce Rickenbach co-opted with uh, village government, later became a village manager. A uh, guy named uh, Bob Wasserman co-opted with the chief of police and became, and still is, uh, one of the, uh, whatever the right word is, uh, promoters of what's now called community policing. I, I think he's grinding his teeth, but for 30, 40 <laughs> years, he's promoted community policing. Uh, there's been close engagement between Antioch students and the uh, technical, might call it conservative, side of village government. Do those co-ops exist today? Uh, so um, recently we've had uh, two Miller Fellows that um, worked with our commissions. One of them are a community access panel. Uh, that was two years ago, another with our Human Relations Commission, and the village has actually, again, uh, is looking for a Miller Fellow to support our um, housing initiatives. So we definitely encourage that. Uh, we have for a long time encouraged uh, both our high school and college students to participate on our commissions uh, actively. We, we really embrace that. And uh, I did want to say also, um, I currently live um, in Arthur Morgan's pad when he downsized. And uh, I, I had the privilege, so it's very auspicious. I, I had the privilege before I was on council of, of the late John Eastman walking me through his book. And uh, that's really informed the way I've looked at uh, local government and Yellow Springs. And uh, I really see, like Susan was saying, this, this happening right now. Our emphasis on local investment in particular through our economic sustainability efforts is, is pretty incredible. Thank you. Yeah, so I think one other thing I'd like yes. to mention is that um, it's, um, it's, it's what has to happen, I think, is you have to have the right people in the mix. And we seem to have the right people in the mix. It's interesting how this evolved. And I wanted to mention that one of the members of Village Council is Kevin Stokes, who is a staff person here at the college. And I can't remember the last time when a faculty person or an administrator or a member of the staff was also a member of Village Council. So I think that's really an important uh, step towards integrating um, these two parts of our community. Thank you. Uh, I don't, we can open it up for your comments, but we also, I like hearing other examples of success stories that you might like to share from your time at Antioch that maybe the panel could respond to. Anyone else want to throw something out? Tom has a mic and I so does it. David, one in the back. Hi, Barry Rogers, uh, class of 78. And uh, while I was raising my daughter, we were living in uh, Evanston, just north of uh, Chicago. And one of the things that was great about the high school there was the tremendous collaboration between the high school and Northwestern University. And I'm just wondering uh, what has happened in the past and whether there's an opportunity uh, for collaboration between Antioch and the local high school, both for um, students here to go in and work uh, at the high school and then vice versa for um, high school students to come in and participate, take classes, uh, do things here at the, uh, at the college. And of course, that's a great way to recruit uh, yeah. students and too. We, we, in my class, we had eight people from Yellow Springs High come to Antioch. So we need to get that gravy train going again. Okay, uh, someone on the panel would, could speak to that. Marcel, please. You want to pass him a mic? Is this one on? So about last, start of last quarter, we started um, conversations and workshops in the high school on SOPP curriculum and helping the high school develop their own SOPP curriculum. And so that's... Was also, that, did they invite you in? Yeah, so we were invited in uh -huh. for about three classes, and that's following into th this fall in terms of developing this curriculum or developing a program that could be self-sustained through their own governance. So Marcel, what is SOPP? I'm, I'm going to break you guys to this, <laughs> this acronym thing once and for all. Yeah, uh, sexual offense prevention policy. <laughs> Thank you. So <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was one way. Another way, so Musical Main, we're doing another Musical Main October 13th. And so 
the idea or the fundraiser for this one is to send one Yellow Springs High Schooler to Antioch College on a full tuition scholarship. Wow. Yeah. What a great idea. Okay, good. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, yes, Pam. You talk about past collaborative events, and I just wanted to share that uh, I used to teach at the Arthur Morgan Middle School here in Yellow Springs, Ohio, uh, before we transferred to the annex behind Yellow Springs High School, our current middle school, for about 35 years. And we often, with the old Antioch, used students as tutors to come over and work with our students. But of course, what would happen, Susan alluded to this with her comments about the black box and students being on campus for a, a limited period of time and then they'd go off on co-op. So what would happen, and maybe this is something that the college can work on with our schools, is, is what would happen is that a great relationship would develop, but then whoosh, the students they're would, gone for months, would right. be gone, and our, our students at the school were saying, you know, where, where'd they go? So here we go. Something to work on. Sure. Yes, there's one in the back. Uh, David, you want to run? Uh, just to point out the obvious that there were a number of co-op students who joined YSI, in, not to mention founding it, uh, that uh, stayed with YSI and ended up never leaving, as well as Morris Bean. Sure. There's a lot of talk in town about Vernet and Morris Bean and, and YSI and the business incubation that happened within the halls of Antioch College. Would anyone like to get specific to talk about steps that are being taken to cultivate that kind of activity? Anyone on the panel want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah, you want to pass it down? Uh, so I mentioned that we uh, just two weeks ago had a uh, three days with Michael Schumann, and he had meetings with all the stakeholders around the village to really uh, figure out or determine what were our best opportunities. And so we've got a couple great things going. One of the things that he highlighted was that a key to a success of an incubator is having space. And we feel that we've, we've got a real opportunity with Antioch College, and that's being actively talked about not just on the village end, um, but also with some of the leadership at Antioch College and some other community members. Um, I feel that you're gonna see this, uh, this happen really soon. I mean, this is one of the things of the nine recommendations uh, that we're prioritizing. And we also understand that there are grant funds that we can get to support this endeavor. The village has economic development funds that we could potentially move forward. And uh, we've got great resources, not just at the college, but in this community as a whole. So um, this is a priority and he gave, gives one example of a town of 3,000 people that in three years started 72 new businesses. Wow. So it can work in small communities. And, and I would suggest that the changes at the college towards an areas of practice model and a self-design model will make that even an easier collaboration. Uh, we're getting close to the end of our time. Let's take two or three more. Yes, ma'am. You want to? Uh, I'm Joan Stromanis. Uh, for a while I was president of this college uh, as well as an alum. And uh, more to the point, I taught in the Yellow Springs High School. I was the only uh, full-time math teacher in the early 60s. And, uh, and that was the hardest job I've ever had. And being president of Antioch was close, but second. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I can reach way, way back. I'm so old that I knew Arthur Mor Morgan. Uh, I did, really. And uh, uh, I want to remember a couple of things. One is that when I was teaching at Yellow Springs High School, I did have um, student teachers uh, from the Antioch College Education Department regularly. And uh, uh, that was a very important uh, relationship. Uh, we no longer have... Uh, the accreditation to get have education majors at Antioch, but when we did, that was a very important um, partnership. I also want to reach way back and mention the Yellow Springs Early Area Survey. I don't know if anyone remembers Everett Wilson and the Yellow Springs Area Survey 
but I was in a, a methods of social research class with Everett Wilson in 1953, and uh, we were uh, we were studying Yellow Springs and Greene County in detail. We did all learned all about social science research methods by studying the village and the county. And uh, that's an invaluable historical resource. I, I have a copy. I don't know if anyone else does. Okay. Thank you I'm, for that. I yes. was a, an education student at Antioch College, and I was a student teacher at Bryan High School. My name is Charlotte Hallam. And the, the year that I was the, doing student teaching, there were two more women in the, in the education department, all three of us wishing to teach secondary education and biology. And it happened that that was the year that the biology teacher from Bryan High School left suddenly and unexpectedly, and they had assigned the gym teacher to teach biology, and he was having a significantly different difficult time because he had never thought of doing that before. So they just sort of had three teachers, and we team taught biology for most of that year. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I'll, I'll share briefly. My wife uh, teaches at the Antioch School, and every year a Miller Fellow from the college comes to the Antioch School, and there's not a formal way to get an education degree now, but they are very much... Uh, working with the children day after day for months at a time. And uh, I think, I'm hoping that many of them will go on and want to go and become teachers, yeah. And the children love having them there. Let's take, let's take two more um, responses and get some panel response. Yes? I have a suggestion for a collaboration, which would be a, a name? Oh, Mary Ann McQueen. I'm vice president of our village council and also a liaison to our housing advisory board on which Kevin sits as well. So Kevin brought up the fact that uh, if a faculty member lives in Yellow Springs, there's much more likelihood probably that they will continue to be here because their heart is here as their work is. I mean, which of course is a very big Morgan-esque thing. So my suggestion is that the village has a co housing initiative that we're working on it seems like it would be great to follow the, maybe the example that Lucy Morgan did. She developed a whole block of housing on um, Limestone and Davis, Xenia Avenue and uh, Phillips for Antioch faculty. Mm. And wow. it seems like this is something that would be worth exploring, developing housing for Antioch faculty. I see a lot of nodding heads. Thank you for that. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Hello, it's, I'm Margaret Kinsman. I graduated in 68. And all the talk of the Morgans has reminded me that I used to volunteer. And I, I wish I could remember the structure through which I did it. Whenever I was on campus for a couple of years, I would go once a week and read Time magazine to Lucy Morgan, who by then was blind. Um, but mind sharp as a tack. Um, I learned more from reading that Time magazine every week than most everything else I did, because she always wanted to discuss it. <laughs> so I'm thinking, it's leading me to think about what fruitful contact could be made with um, our demographic, the, 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 the older people in Yellow Springs. Um, if you're reaching out to schools, then there's also the other side of the equation. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's some fruitful ideas and would, would anyone, does anyone on the panel have any thoughts or uh, experience with that? Well, it just occurred to me, I was thinking about it's wonderful. Um, it just occurred to me, that's really, that's pretty cool. Um, we have this uh, Friends Care community here in Yellow Springs. And Carl, hi, Dr. Hyde, knows a lot about it. And he's a, he is a, a resident. And I was just thinking, you know, this is, would potentially be an opportunity for um, Antioch students. Um, I don't believe there is any relationship between the college in terms of Miller fellowships at the Friends Care Community. Is that right? Gina Marie, is there? We have. Oh, you do. Pass the mic. Um, there, 
there wasn't one this past year um, because there was a change of leadership at um, the director for the Friends Care, but we have had Miller Fellows at Friends Care um, in the previous years. We also have a very active senior center in Yellow Springs. Is, has there ever been a Miller Fellow? Yes, there as well. Okay, great, good. Uh, uh, yes. Um, just to follow up, uh, Marcel was talking about the need for better um, institutional memory and following up with what you're just saying, that WISO now started last year doing interviews, historical interviews, and students are interviewing alums as they come back to tell their story. That was happening but, all day today, yeah. right. So maybe those that same model could be done with older people in the care center or anywhere on campus or any of us coming in. I mean, there's a lot of experience from us that we want to make sure isn't lost. Um, so it's the interviews today were more about you know our co-ops and what our life was like, um, but there may be more uh, opportunities to share uh, the historical data. Thank you for that. Yeah. We so, videoed this session, so we've captured all of the conversation. Uh, Tom? I just want to say that um, a, a, a plug uh, for why so. This is one of the things that the community voices uh, project that they've been developing is really um, uh, advancing, and they're working with uh, senior centers and uh, I think one in, um, uh, well, the the library project in Dayton. All, all over West Dayton, Dayton, right. Yes, uh, yeah. Uh, and the Antioch College Village now, the Antioch College pilot pocket neighborhood project, that's, that's intended to be, that larger project is a multi-generational housing project. So it's really looking at how to integrate um, generations and activity in a, uh, in a shared village. Right. Yeah. Thank you for that. I was told, actually, uh, that I should bring the hammer down very Good. hard okay. at some point, because I, I, don't, I don't have a watch on. We're, we're, we're done. We're done. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I, would, I would like to thank all of our panelists and our moderator for a very, very interesting and just the beginning of a conversation that will be ongoing. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it very much.